game. Let's send it down to Dom, who's with TSM's top laner. Thanks so much, guys. Great cast on the day. I'm joined by Hanser. Congratulations on the win. TSM, you guys are back in form. That was so patient and methodical. Well played, dude. Uh, how has it been coming back to that? Um, it's been pretty nice because normally in scrims, we play just like super over aggressive and we're not playing like really calculated at all. And this game, we played really patiently and like didn't take a lot of risks. And it just felt really good that we played cleanly. Yeah, it was a very clean performance that we've seen from you guys. Now, this ties you for second place with both Cloud9 and CLG. Do you guys see yourself coming out on top of them? Um, I think by the end of the split, we'll be better. But we we'll just have to work hard for now. Yeah, very solid. You've been making some solid progress so far. Now, tomorrow, you're playing against Team Liquid. Are you guys ready? Uh, they have Weldon as a sports psychologist right now, so it'll be a little bit tougher, but I think we're prepared. I, I keep hearing about Weldon. Is he that much of an impact? Uh, he's actually super helpful, and he just does like a lot for teams, so I think he'll help Liquid a lot. Yeah, very solid. Well, we're looking forward to see you play. Hanser, thank you so much. We're going to send it back to the guys at the desk to break that down. Good job. Thank you very much, Dom. Diving into this game here, TSM versus Echo Fox, as Hanser said, he's very happy that the team yep. was able to play a more methodical, well-thought-out game. They definitely looked a little bit more cool, calm, and collected with the lead that they have secured. Yeah. But I want to go all the way back to Champions Life before we dive into the mechanics of the game and start with Echo Fox. Zyrene, I know that we're noticing a bit of a trend here on the side of Echo Fox that could be worrisome. Yeah, out of their four wins that they had in a row, three of those were with Corky mid in the double AD carry composition. They left that up. They knew that Callista was not going to be taken away. And so they secured Callista Alistar for themselves on TSM. And this gives you so much because it covers a bit of your wave clear. It covers a lot of your team fight and it covers your engage as well as some disengage. So this is just a great core to have and then build your team around that. And then they went for the Nautilus for some peel. They mm -hmm. went for the Orianna, which Orianna is this, this champion that keeps showing up in the mid lane whenever mid laners like, you know, Maybe I've been a little inconsistent lately. Let, let's just play some Oriana. Let's just <laughs> dust it off. Let's bring it back. And then the performances that Oriana's been having have been relatively good. But overall, I think that going back to the Echo Fox point, they were predictable in this draft. Mm -hmm. You pick the Corky. You know it's going to be double AD carry. You draft against that, and then you're basically done from there. But I do think yep. that the game, of course, uh, it doesn't come down to champion select. But I do, see, I do think that when you see it coming, it's much easier to prepare for it. Yeah, TSM came in this game with... The tempo lead the entire time off a better played lane swap and a team fight comp. And when you have the tempo, you can always play your style of game. You show up at the Dragons, Echo Fox are willing to team fight them. Lo and behold, Nada Soriana wins team fights. Whoa, surprises! <laughs> and, you know, TSM just won basically every battle. Right? Yeah, the Malphite ulti seemed really desperate at some times where he's There's like, no okay, let's just go up. two. So, yeah, exactly. There's nobody to follow up. And we saw some casks from Braum every now and then, but it, yeah. they were still just kind of pushing people away instead yep. of actually helping. So. so you mentioned that obviously TSM, a, a mid-game centric team composition in that Ori Callista as yep. well as the Nautilus. So they're very happy to, to have secured a lead that let them play exactly the they way want. they wanted yeah. to in that mid-game. Let's talk about how they got that advantage. Yes. We're going to pull up the lane swap here. Freak, I'm going to let you dissect this one. There's a lot of elements that play yeah. into this, and it is a pretty sweet illustration of one team understanding how and when to change play styles and another being a little bit slow on the uptake. Right, so both these teams do phase one of the lane swap basically the same, right? You get it down to one cast bin, you kill the turret at the same time. This is 345 in. But then phase two... TSM knows better. So Hanser freezes for a bit, and then he's like, right about now, he's like, oh wait, I'm gonna push, because Kalista's walking into top lane right now. KFO is still freezing. Hanser shoves the entire wave, and then backs out. So the cannon dies, Hanser walks away, KFO's like, oh, there's a Kalista walking into my lane right now, right? Keith and Big have no wave to push it. Their cannon is dead. They've got five minions on this wave trying to push. KFO kept trying to freeze, Here's a double lift with a cannon with seven caster minions, and you see Keith and Big try to push with literally five minions, and double gets to push alongside Yellow Star with like 14. And that means that Keith and Big are not killing this turret, but double lift sure as hell is. KFO has to recall away from this wave, and phase two of the lane swap, infinitely better played by TSM. They understand what phase two of the lane swap actually is, which is the AD carry walks back to the other lane. You get them that wave, or if you can, or you at the very least deny the other wave, which Hanser did, KFO did not, Echo Fox need to learn this, 
But hey, look, here's a very obviously understandable point that TSM knows that Echo Fox don't. Yeah, you also have to think about the communication there because if you're the top laner, you're looking at last hitting, you're not really looking at the wave bottom. Somebody needs to call that for you that you need to start shoving that out as soon as possible. Or you need to and know they didn't it. react to it. Right, like lane swaps are a thing you can literally practice by watching VODs and playing 5v0 against no one. Mm -hmm. And just like, you can do the first half of the lane swap, literally 5 is 0 against bots and knock the turret down and practice it and get your time down to the same time TSM has. Phase 2, okay, you need someone to do that against you, but like, have a B team, do that. You literally don't even need to communicate. You can just like program five bots to play the first six minutes properly in a lane swap right now. <laughs> All right, well, let's get on that. Because <laughs> I would love to practice lane swaps myself. Uh, but I do think it is a very valuable point. And, and this is where I want to pull up another tweet in reference to our question of the day. At Save Us G2J says, same page as Freak Liquid and Energy will have it this split. However, next split, watch out for Echo Fox. They are yep. great. And I think it's a very clear example of, I mean, they do have the makings of a team that could go to playoffs with enough time. And that's really it. They need to shore up these small errors, these, mm -hmm. you know, these inconsistencies in their early game. So they give themselves a fighting chance right. in the mid game against a team like TSM. I'd also say they would have been a playoff team this split if it wasn't for some of those roster issues because they've they lost so games. many losses because of that. Yep. So no. they, they lost six games, including a forfeit loss, not having the roster together. Um, and also, this was the test of are you actually a f are you the fourth best team, right? right? Beat Energy, mm -hmm. beat Liquid. Okay, next up is TSM. Okay, they're not as good as TSM. Many people didn't think so, but well, you didn't think they'd beat Energy and Liquid either. So like that's where they stand. But they had six free losses, so now they've got to try to pick up the pieces. There's still room for an upset win, but it'll be hard. Yeah, All playing right. Immortals tomorrow, it might be an O2 week here for yeah. Echo Fox. See how they bounce back because that's important as well. Yeah. yeah, tough game for Echo Fox tomorrow. TSM will be up against Liquid, so another team that's looking to challenge kind of in that middle of the pack. Mm -hmm. You were wondering at the beginning of the day, as Irene, will TSM be able to bounce back after that O2? This is a good start, right? It's an expected win. This is a team they should have beat, but they did it, and they did it methodically as Hanser pointed out. Coming up next, we'll see if Immortals can continue their perfect season or if CLG will hand them their first loss. The North American LCS continues after this quick break. Looking at Quinn here. Hanser again. They're going to hover it. They have 15 <laughs> seconds left. I feel like that's a tongue and cheek cover right there from Bjergsen. Stop hovering Quinn, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Such a troll. It's the counter to Malphite. <laughs> Bits of damage being traded back and forth. KS KFO with the flash in, hit out. Three man shockwave. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. go, go. Chase, I'm you, I'm end, end for me, end for me. Yellow Star goes in. That's a shockwave once again on three. And it just shreds the team of Echo Fox along with double its red. That's going to be Team Solo mid taking down Echo Fox.